This podcast was produced using artificial intelligence and refined by human editors. Hello, globetrotters, city slickers, and sun seekers out there. Welcome aboard another episode of Travel with Lara and Luca. I'm your host, Lara, bibliophile, coffee aficionado, and your virtual guide through the buzzing streets and sultry sunsets of Los Angeles. And I'm Luca, a film fanatic, taco enthusiast, and your co-captain on this sprawling urban safari. Buckle your seatbelts, folks. Lara, do you think they're ready for the City of Angels? I don't know if anyone can ever be completely ready for LA, Luca, but we'll do our best to prepare them for one roller coaster of a ride through history, culture, and palm trees that seem to touch the sky. I mean, really, is it the sunshine or the stars that draw people here? Both, Lara, both. The sun shines like a spotlight on a stage, and talking about stages, you won't find a grander stage than Hollywood. Absolutely. Before we dive right in, let's give our listeners a bit of background about us. So Luca, besides being an unparalleled taco connoisseur, what draws you to LA? Thanks for that flavorful introduction, Lara. Well, I'm a kid from the Midwest who got bewitched by the silver screen. Moved here and now I can't get enough of the cinematic streets where every corner feels like a scene from a classic flick. What about you? What's the chapter in LA's story that keeps you turning the pages? For me, LA is a city of narratives woven together, the ones told and untold. As a writer, it's like living inside an anthology of diverse voices and tales. From the crackling energy of Venice Beach to the serene whispers of the Huntington Library Gardens, there's a story everywhere. I couldn't agree more. And speaking of stories, we've got a doozy of an episode for everyone today, don't we, Lara? We do indeed, packed tighter than the 101 at rush hour. Oh, the infamous LA traffic. It's sometimes like the city is giving you an enforced pause to admire the view, or more often, the car in front. True, but we're taking you well beyond the windshield views on today's episode. We'll trek through the sprawl of iconic sights, amble around the alluring food scene, and uncover hidden gems that even some locals don't know about. And if you thought LA was just surface glitz and glam, hold on to your hats because we're also diving deep into the quirks and the unexpected historical wrinkles that'll make you see this metropolis in a whole new light. Remember that time, Luca, when we tried that all-day breakfast cafe in Santa Monica and ended up in an impromptu poetry reading with a group of beach yogis? How could I forget? It's those spontaneous serendipitous encounters that really make LA the vibrant canvas it is. And I'm not just talking bacon and eggs here, but bacon, eggs, and a side of existential musings. Oh, the combo of a lifetime. These surprises may seem odd to outsiders, but they're just everyday seasoning here in LA's melting pot of wonders. That's right. This city is an ever-evolving mosaic, and today, we're your personal mosaic tour guides. So whether you live here, are planning to visit, or just like to wanderlust from the comfort of your home, there's something in this episode for everyone. And we've both been around the globe a bit. Luca with his international film festivals and me chasing literary haunts through Europe. But we always come back here to LA. There's no place quite as paradoxically intimate and grand, suburban and urban, timeless and yet constantly racing towards the future. Well put, my poetic friend. And talking about racing towards the future, we're racing towards sharing the first segment of today's journey, iconic sights. Lara, I bet you can't wait to talk about the Hollywood sign. You know me too well, Luca. But it's not just about the well-trodden path to those big white letters. It's the echo of dreams they stand for. For every successful I made it, there's a resilient I'm still trying, and some fascinating you won't believe this stories. The sounds of dreams are indeed loud here. From the softly spoken hopes to the megaphone announcements of success. But before we set out on our city trek, Tell us, Lara, what's one piece of advice you would give our listeners about approaching LA? Don't try to define it. LA will constantly surprise you, reshape itself, and invite you to play a role in its grand script. Keep your eyes, ears, and heart open. LA is an enigma wrapped in a riddle, sprinkled with stardust. We're here to help you navigate its winding scripts, and maybe, just maybe, you'll fall for its charms just like we have. I have no doubt. Now, dear listeners, brace yourselves as we take you on a rhythmic jaunt through the places that make Los Angeles a city of legend and of living stories. This is Travel with Lara and Luca, 
and our City of Angels adventure is just beginning. Stay tuned. Your premiere showing of L.A. starts now. Welcome back, dear listeners. You're tuned into Travel with Lara and Luca, where today's episode has us casting our eyes on the iconic sites of Los Angeles, the landmarks that define the city skyline, narrate its history, and of course, dominate visitors' Instagram feeds. That's the double tap truth, Lara, and nowhere does the flash of camera bulbs sparkle quite like at the foot of the Hollywood sign. Perched up there in the hills, it's more than just nine white letters. It's the town's unofficial sentinel, watching over the dreams of millions. Absolutely, Luca. Originally created as an advertisement for a local real estate development called Hollywoodland back in 1923, it has since become a beacon call for starry-eyed actors and actresses. Luca, have you ever hiked up to the sign? Several times. There's something magical about standing so close to such an emblematic symbol. The view from up there, it's just cinematic, isn't it? It is. And speaking of cinematic, readers, you'll appreciate this. Did you know the sign is protected by the highest tech security, including razor wire, infrared technology, and 24-hour monitoring by the LAPD? Sounds like a plot for a heist movie. Mission almost impossible. <laughs> almost impossible indeed. But how about we take a stroll down from the hills and onto the Boulevard of Stars, the Hollywood Walk of Fame? Ah, the Walk of Fame, of course the city's tessellated tribute to its brightest stars. Over 2,600 terrazzo and brass stars are embedded in the sidewalks along 15 blocks of Hollywood Boulevard and three blocks of Vine Street. Each star commemorates an entertainer for their achievements in the entertainment industry. And though some choose to seek out the stars of legendary actors like Humphrey Bogart or Marilyn Monroe, others prefer the contemporary icons like the Backstreet Boys or Halle Berry. You know, Lara, a funny anecdote, there was once a typo on Julia Louis-Dreyfus's star. Can you imagine having to redo your Hollywood star because it added an O to your name? <sighs> oh dear, I bet somebody wished they could have done control Z on that one. Mistakes aside, these stars carry more than just names. They hold memories of drive, commitment, and the ever-enduring hope that lights this city up. Absolutely. And while we're talking commitment, we shouldn't overlook the dedication of those maintaining the iconic Grauman's Chinese Theater. Handprints in the cement, classic movie screenings, and all. The theater itself is like a portal to a different era, with its grand red columns and distinctive dragon decor. It's far from your average multiplex experience, don't you think? Oh, far beyond average. It's as close to time travel as you can get without a DeLorean. Now, let's move to an icon that provides perhaps the best view of this sprawling city, the Griffith Observatory. Ah, the domed sentinel of the south-facing slope of Mount Hollywood. Griffith J. Griffith, that's the man behind it, envisioned a place where the public could access the cosmos. And since 1935, that's just what the observatory has been doing. Imagine all the eyes that have peered through that telescope, Luca, the Zeiss telescope that's been there since the beginning, it's been a shared lens for us, the lookers, to marvel at the universe. And let's not overlook the power of the dome as a character in movies, right? The observatory has cameoed in classics like Rebel Without a Cause and La La Land. It's a silent star in its own right. But while we're discussing cultural treasure troves, we must pay homage to the Getty Center. A modern acropolis nestled in the Brentwood Hills, the Getty is much more than an art museum. With its travertine-clad buildings and serene gardens offering panoramic views of LA, it's one of those places that demand attention. Art lovers can spend days lost in the rich paintings, sculptures, and photographs. It's as if each hall or garden is a chapter in a global storybook. J. Paul Getty wanted art to be accessible for all, an enriching experience. With free admission, just a parking fee, it's remarkable. How many afternoons have you whittled away in those peaceful gardens, Lara? I've lost count. Between the Cactus Garden's spiky inhabitants and the Central Garden's comforting stream, you could say I found my muse amidst those plants and paths more than once. And that's what Los Angeles does best, doesn't it? It offers these extraordinary places where nature meets creativity and you're inspired to find yourself. Or lose yourself, you pick. How about both? Now, segueing into a place where we've both found and lost ourselves, the unparalleled 
the one and only Pacific Park on the Santa Monica Pier. You're not going to find a more iconic beachfront playground than this. The Ferris wheel, the carousel, these aren't mere rides, but landmarks that tell of historical whimsy and the Californian promise of perennial summertime. Let's not forget the Route 66 sign, the end of the trail, they call it. From Chicago to Santa Monica, that road is intertwined with the American dream. And speaking of dreams, you had a dream here once, right, Lara? Something about a Ferris wheel and a talking seagull? Let's save that Fantasia for the blooper reel episode. But yes, Santa Monica Pier is where magic and sleep-deprived delusions intersect. Santa Monica Pier magic aside, the real spellbinding happens where the city meets the sand, Venice Beach. With its vibrant boardwalk and street performers, it's a melting pot of spirit and showmanship. And each performer on the Venice Beach boardwalk is like a vibrant thread in LA's cultural tapestry. Skaters, bodybuilders, artists, it's the epitome of California freedom. Not to mention, it's where people watching becomes an Olympic sport. Gold medals all around. In just this segment alone, we've climbed hills, touched the stars, time traveled, and promenaded the boardwalk, all without leaving our studio. Only in LA, Luca. Now that we've ventured through the stars and heights of iconic sights, listeners, let's tantalize our taste buds as we segue to our next segment, delicious cuisine. Prepare to drool. Oh, my stomach's ready. Join us after the break, where we dish out LA's culinary landscape, one heavenly bite at a time. Stay tuned, food lovers. And we're back to travel with Lara and Luca, slicing into the sumptuous segment that's all about Los Angeles' delicious cuisine. When it comes to food, LA is as diverse as its population, offering a taste of the world in a single city. That's right, Luca. From food trucks doling out Korean-Mexican fusion tacos to high-end sushi that transports you straight to Tokyo, LA's food scene is a smorgasbord of global flavors. Tell me, Luca, if you had only one meal left in LA, where would you go and what would you have? Oh, that's cruel, Lara. One meal? I'd have to go with the classic LA street food experience, the mighty taco. I'd stand in line at a taco truck in East LA with the sense of cilantro and grilled carne asada in the air and order a platter of tacos al pastor with a side of freshly made guacamole. What about you? Ooh, you've set the bar high, but for me, it'd be a tie between a comforting bowl of ramen in Little Tokyo and the pink-hued sunset views with a glass of Chardonnay and a farm-to-table plate at a vineyard in Malibu. A tie, eh? That's cheating. But let's pivot from our final meals to an area acclaimed worldwide for its variety of tastes, Koreatown, or K-Town, as locals like to call it. K-Town is a culinary jungle, isn't it? You've got Korean barbecue joints where you can grill your own meat at the table, bubbling hot pots, and let's not forget Korean fried chicken that gives Southern style a run for its money. And after all that feasting, a serene moment in a Korean dessert cafe is bliss, sipping traditional tea and nibbling on a mochi or a slice of light as air bingsu. Speaking of moments of bliss, the LA food scene wouldn't be complete without mentioning the institution that is the Californian style pizza. Pioneered by chefs like Wolfgang Puck, it's a pizza that broke all the rules. Thin crust and topped with fresh, unconventional ingredients like goat cheese, duck sausage, or smoked salmon. Now that's a pie to remember. As for me, I could wax poetic about the wonders of an LA breakfast. I mean, where else can you find health nirvana with acai bowls, matcha lattes, and every avocado toast combination under the sun? It's the city that has probably coined more food trends than any other. Remember when kale became the king of greens? How could I forget? LA is the kale metropolis. But for those who swing the pendulum towards indulgence, we've got donut shops that are more like laboratories of sweetness. Places like Donut Friend offer crave-worthy creations that challenge your very perception of this humble pastry. A donut shop that's also a music venue, that's peak LA for you. Creativity meets confectionery. You got that right. Plant-based eaters, fear not. LA is your haven. From gourmet vegan restaurants to casual plant-powered eateries, you won't be left hungry. And let's not forget the food festivals. Smorgasburg LA, for example, where you can munch your way through a world of flavor all in one sunny Sunday afternoon. I've had everything from Jamaican patties to Filipino halo halo there. 
Smorgasburg is like an amusement park for your taste buds. Remember when we tried the Spam Muzubi from one of the stands and how unexpectedly delightful that was? Oh, how could I forget? It was a revelation in a rice block. But moving from the modern, let's talk history for a sec. L.A. isn't L.A. without its classic eateries like Philippe's, home of the original French dipped sandwich, and Clifton's, which is a piece of dining Americana with its forest-themed cafeteria. I've always felt there's a comforting timelessness when eating at places like Musso and Frank Grill or the original farmer's market. It's like every bite holds a story. Rightfully so. These establishments witnessed the roaring 20s, the cinematic 50s, and they continue to serve in the internet era. Let's toast to these culinary landmarks that have stood as chapters in LA's tastiest tales. Cheers to that. But how can we talk LA cuisine without the luxury dining scene? With gastronomic powerhouses like Troy Mech, Providence, and Spago, there's a constellation of Michelin stars here. Indeed, it's where class meets creativity. Plates are like painted canvases, each dish a testament to the city's relentless inventiveness. Absolutely. And with that inventiveness comes fusion cuisine. LA is the crucible where different cultural foods blend, creating something wondrously new, like the sushi burrito or deep fried ice cream burgers. Fusion is the flavor of the city, but even traditional fare like tacos has seen innovation here. Kogi Barbecue's Korean barbecue tacos shook up the street food game back in the day and spawned an entire genre. Roy Choi, the godfather of the gourmet food truck scene, deserves a culinary Oscar for that one. Remember when we tracked down the Kogi truck? It was our fast and the foodiest mission across LA. That was an epic quest. But on the flip side, how many late nights have we ended at a diner like Cantor's or Swinger's? For a metropolis that seems hyper fixated on health, it certainly knows how to do comfort food right. There's nothing that a plate of fluffy pancakes and endless coffee can't fix. And maybe that's the secret ingredient of LA cuisine. It has a heart, Lara. Every dish feels like it belongs to a family, a culture, a story. And that's the culinary journey of LA, a life-affirming romp through tastes and indulgences, a banquet where every palate finds its home. Luca, did we cover it all? We might've just scratched the surface, but if our listeners aren't drooling by now, then we haven't done our job. And our job isn't done yet because after the break, we whisk you away to places you might not find in your guidebooks. The tucked away, the overlooked, the hidden gems of Los Angeles. Get ready to jot down notes. Our intrepid expedition to LA's best kept secrets is up next, right after a word from our imaginary sponsors. Stay tuned and we'll unravel those mysteries together. Welcome back, adventuring foodies and culture hounds. You're listening to Travel with Lara and Luca, and it's time to unearth the lesser known, the undisturbed, the diamond in the rough spots of Los Angeles that we've affectionately dubbed Hidden Gems. That's right, Lara. We've chomped on tacos and gawked at stars, but now we peel back the sun-kissed veneer of LA to reveal its secret spots. Places that even some Angelinos might say, huh, I never knew that was there. And I have to say, Luca, discovering these places feels like being let in on a secret, a whisper from LA itself, inviting you into its exclusive club. There's a little thrill, right? Like when we first walked into the Museum of Jurassic Technology. Remember that? Oh, how could I forget? Nestled in Culver City, a place where you'd expect straight-laced studios, you find this intriguing spot blurring the lines between truth, fiction, and the surreal world of historical curiosities. It's like stepping into a Victorian hodgepodge of artifacts and tales so bizarre you'd think you've walked into a fantasy novel. In one corner, you've got micro, miniature sculptures. In another, bat-based artwork. They even have a tea room upstairs, which feels like a drawing room from some forgotten era where you half expect to be joined by a character out of a Lewis Carroll story. Speaking of characters, another hidden gem where LA's history whispers through its walls is the time travel mart in Echo Park. It's part convenience store, part emporium for chrononauts, and 100% proceeds go to tutoring programs. It's whimsy with a cause. You can grab a bottle of mammoth chunks or a robot emotion chip off the shelf. Yet it's more than just quirky items. There's this warm, nostalgic tug, isn't there? For sure. You leave feeling like you've not only stepped back in time, 
but also made an investment in the future. Exactly. And speaking of stepping back, El Matador Beach. It might not be a secret to locals, but its quiet majesty is easy to miss. It's a sliver of Malibu magic with craggy rocks and sea caves you can explore at low tide. It's the kind of beach you'd expect to find a message in a bottle, a treasure map. Anything's possible here. It's less crowded than Zuma or Santa Monica, offering a serene escapade with the Pacific's soothing rumble as your soundtrack. And while we're on serene escapades, the Venice canals embody hidden charm. Modeled after Venice, Italy's famous waterways, most tourists miss this tucked away labyrinth of lush walkways and storybook bridges. Last time I was there, a duck family escorted me along my stroll. If that doesn't scream hidden gem, I don't know what does. Truly an idyllic retreat, but for something different still, there's the whisper quiet Echo Park Lotus Garden. Only open to the public a few days a year, it's not widely known, but it is widely beautiful. An ephemeral spectacle is right. A brief bloom of colors on the water's surface, then tucked away again like a closed treasure chest. Now in the heart of downtown, we can't journey on without angling a spotlight on the last bookstore. It's not just the incredible labyrinth of books, the tunnels made of tomes, or the knick-knack laden art corners. The entire place feels enchanted. It embodies a literary fantasy. There's the suspended collection of flying books, snug reading nooks, and records, plenty of vinyl for music aficionados that turn the store into a cultural haven. A bookstore where film buffs, music lovers, and literateurs all find their nirvana. Speaking of nirvana, Lara, the Magic Castle is certainly worth a mention. A private club for magicians that dates back to 1909, its invite-only policy makes it a truly secretive establishment. Right in the heart of Hollywood, it's a Victorian mansion offering illusions and wonder behind every mahogany door. Even though it's a bit of a riddle to gain entry, sometimes they host events open to the lucky public, worth keeping an eye out for. And then there's the abandoned zoo in Griffith Park. It sounds eerie, and well, it is. Once a functioning zoo, now it's a collection of empty enclosures that you can hike to and explore. It's fascinating to stand where lions and tigers once prowled, glance at the old graffiti, and think about the joyful roars and squawks that once filled the air. Exploring those haunts is like seeing the layers of LA's past pulled back, one vignette at a time. Then when you surface from those moody depths, there's a change of pace with something like the Peace Awareness Labyrinth and Gardens. It's a serene space in the West Adams District, often overlooked. A stone's throw from the bustle, there you wander meditatively through a labyrinth, your thoughts as free-flowing as the garden's water features. So many transient moments, yet these gems remain, holding LA's history in their nooks and crannies, story-rich and forever whispering. Which is why today's meander through LA's untrodden paths isn't quite complete without giving a nod to the underground tunnels of LA. Once used for everything from bootlegging to bank transactions, they're remnants of a city's secret dealings. Though mostly sealed off now, their existence is like something out of a Chandler novel, shadowy, gritty, and teeming with the possibility of the unknown. And with that, we bring our Hidden Gems segment to a close. A little wiser, no doubt a lot more curious, and probably with a lengthy must-visit list. There'll be plenty more to explore, dear listeners. But for now, after the break, we'll vividly summon up the must-see places of LA, the spots that transform a trip here from memorable to unforgettable. So, don't go away. We won't be long. Welcome back, intrepid explorers. This is Travel with Lara and Luca, your go-to audio compass for scoping out Los Angeles. We've unearthed hidden gems, but now it's time to shine a light on the must-see places that make LA, well, LA. That's right, Luca. These are the spots you might already have on your checklist, but we're here to color in those outlines with the vibrant hues of personal experience and local lore. Because if you come to Los Angeles and miss these, did you even really visit? No way, Lara. It'd be like going to Paris and skipping the Eiffel Tower, or visiting New York and ignoring the Statue of Liberty. And in that spirit, let's kick things off with a place that's more than just an amusement park. It's a cultural landmark, Disneyland. Ah, the happiest place on Earth. No matter how many times you go, the magic of walking down Main Street, USA, 
with the iconic Sleeping Beauty castle rising in the distance, it just never gets old. It's where fantasy becomes tangible, a place where kids and adults find common ground in awe and wonder. Do you remember your first ride on Space Mountain, Lara? How could I forget? That initial drop nearly resulted in me seeing stars in a more literal sense than most. Now, not to drift too far from the theme of thrills, Universal Studios Hollywood is another must-see that pairs exhilarating rides with a genuine glimpse behind the scenes of movie magic. Absolutely, Luca. The studio tour there is like stepping into a living museum of cinematic history. King Kong, Jaws, Psycho, these classics come alive as you trundle through. And let's not forget the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, an utterly immersive slice of Hogwarts here in LA. Buttermilk beers all around. From magical to factual, we sail our podcast ship to the shores of the California Science Center, home to none other than the Space Shuttle Endeavor. A testament to human endeavor, indeed. Seeing Endeavor up close, it's palpable. You can practically feel the gravity it defied. There's a humbling quality to being dwarfed by such an epic piece of machinery. And right next door, you have the Natural History Museum. I could spend hours, days even, among the dinosaur bones marveling at the biodiversity that Earth has cradled. It's like walking through a portal to LA's prehistoric past. You half expect a T-Rex to round the corner rather than a tour guide. Speaking of history, the Broad Museum is relatively new, yet it's stamped itself as a must-see with its contemporary art collection. It's not just the art inside, but the very building that's a work of art. Then, you exit the Broad, take a leisurely stroll through Grand Park, and you find yourself at the imposing Walt Disney Concert Hall. Even if you don't catch a performance, just witnessing the architecture is a symphony for the eyes. Frank Gehry's masterwork, it sings even in silence. For music enthusiasts visiting LA, the concert hall is an aria that awaits no encore. Attend a show and let the LA Philharmonic transport you to another dimension. Now, if we're talking dimensions, then the arts district is like a separate reality. Once abandoned warehouses, now canvases for street art and graffiti, craft breweries and galleries, urban renaissance personified. Change of pace, change of place. Let's talk about the Getty Villa, sister site to the Getty Center. It provides a window into the ancient worlds of Greece and Rome with its art and architecture. Standing amidst the villa's gardens and gazing upon the ocean, you could swear you're on some opulent Mediterranean shoreline. Time blurs here between the ancient and the now. From old world to a new age wonderland, let's float over to Venice Beach, the infamous Muscle Beach, skateboard parks, and the ever-changing tapestry of murals. It's a bohemian rhapsody. Remember when we bumped into that sidewalk poet who typed up spontaneous verse on his vintage typewriter? That's when I thought, yup, we're in Venice. And one doesn't just leave Venice without meandering along Abbott Kinney Boulevard. Once a sleepy street, now a pulsating vein of boutique shops, hip eateries, and a spirit that's part beach town, part urban cool. Moving from the eclectic avenues of Venice, we'd be remiss not to mention the storied enclaves of Rodeo Drive and Beverly Hills. Even if luxury shopping isn't your bag, the people watching and window shopping are world class. It's where glamour walks hand in hand with casual opulence. Even the palm trees here seem to stand a little taller, a little prouder. Speaking of nature's marvels, the Los Angeles County Arboretum and Botanic Garden is a lush reprieve, home to flora from every corner of the globe and the majestic peafowl that roam free. You haven't truly visited LA until you've been eyed by a peacock in those gardens, I always say. Now for a soaring conclusion to our must-see places segment, we touch on the San Gabriel Mountains and Mount Baldy. Swap the cityscape for sweeping vistas, clear your mind with those high altitude breezes. We may be city dwellers, but the mountains remind us there's a wild streak in every Angelino's heart. From the tallest peak to the bustling streets, La La Land offers an epic array of must-sees. But believe it or not, we're just scratching the surface. There's more to the LA story, quirks, oddities, and eccentricities that we'll dive into right after this break. Buckle up as we cover the weird facts about LA you never knew you needed to know. Stay with us. And we're back to travel with Lara and Luca. 
Having savored the essence of must-see places in LA, let's now twist the kaleidoscope and peer into the peculiar, yes, we're talking weird facts about this city that are bound to tickle your fancy or raise an intrigued eyebrow. That's what LA does best. It serves up surprises that are as outlandish as they are delightful. So, if you're ready for a stroll down the more unusual lanes of LA lore, let's begin with a bang. Or should I say, well, actually, not with a bang at all. Oh, do elaborate. Imagine, it's 1942, the air is thick with with two tensions, and suddenly, an unexplained event known as the Battle of Los Angeles occurs. Flares and shells light up the night sky above LA as the US Army's 37th Coast Artillery Brigade fires at apparently nothing. No enemy planes in sight, yet anti-aircraft guns blaze away. Was it nerves, a false alarm, or something otherworldly? The theories abound, but the fact remains. LA fought a battle against an invisible foe. And speaking of otherworldly, Lara, did I ever tell you that Los Angeles has an official witch? No, but now you have to. Well, it's true. Louise Hubner was declared the official witch of Los Angeles in 1968. She even performed a spell to increase the county's sexual vitality, which tells you something about the caliber of LA's civic concerns back in the 60s. <sighs> what a city. Moving from witches to waves, have you heard about the time it snowed in Hollywood? Snow in sunny LA? That would be the day. Less frosty and more soapy, in 1949, a legendary blizzard of foamy suds blanketed a whole block. An airplane hangar used for movie sets mistakenly let out a torrent of firefighting foam. It piled up like snowdrifts and even brought out sleds. A sledding party in the middle of LA. Now there's something I wish I'd seen. But staying aloft, LA's skies once hosted zeppelins. The Griffith Park Aerodrome, which included the now-gone Griffith Park Zoo, had a massive airship mooring mast intended to attract dirigibles, those cumbersome airborne leviathans. LA's ambitions were sky high, but I suppose they didn't account for the dirigible becoming somewhat deflated in popularity. Indeed. And speaking of things air-related, LA might be accused of being a little, well, vain. The city has its own patented shade of blue, Dodger blue, to be precise. A city with its own color palette. I'm not even surprised. Now, if we're painting factual curiosities, here's a Picasso of a fact. The Hollywood Forever Cemetery not only houses the remains of movie stars, but also hosts movie screenings. Imagine watching a film surrounded by the ghosts of stars past. Yes, Sinespia's outdoor movie nights, there are a mix of reverence and revelry, classic films beneath the stars and marble headstones. Only in LA. Speaking of marble, ever tread upon sparkly sidewalks and thought you'd spotted glitter? Well, Lou, that's not wishful thinking. LA sidewalks sometimes sparkle with mica. Glittering pathways, as if you're a star yourself. I approve. LA, I approve. And speaking of stars, did you know there are tunnels beneath the Hollywood Walk of Fame? Rumored escape routes for celebrity visitors, bank vaults, and speakeasies during Prohibition. It's a whole underground world echoing with the quiet footsteps of history and possibly some tap dancing ghosts. And while underground, let's talk about the legend of the lizard people. Yes, you heard that right. Lizard people, not to be confused with modern day political conspiracy, refer to an ancient reptilian race purported to have built a network of tunnels under the city to hide their gold. LA's own subterranean urban mythology, gold, labyrinths, and lizard folks, it doesn't get much weirder than that. You'd think that. But brace yourself, LA might now be synonymous with the automobile, but there was once a robust public transit system here. The Pacific Electric Red Car Trolley Network was one of the largest of its kind before being dismantled in the 1950s. And as transit lore has it, undone by a car tire oil and gas coalition, was it conspiracy or natural urban evolution? That's LA for you, always at the crossroads of mystery and innovation. Speaking of which, we've got our own private light show thanks to the San Pedro Bay phenomenon known as the Green Flash. It's the stuff of pirate legends, but it's real. A swift emerald glimmer just as the sun dips below the horizon on clear days. The city where science meets the supernatural, like Watts Towers, an architectural anomaly towering over their neighborhood. Have you been there, Lara? Indeed, those spires were sculpted single-handedly by Simon Rodia, with no formal construction training, just pure visionary zeal. And look at them now, 
standing strong like folk art sentinels amidst the hustle and bustle of South LA. From sledding without snow to lizard legends lingering below, our LA is undeniably an anthology of the eccentric. Yet, it also stands as a monument to human tenacity and furor, doesn't it? It does. LA is history woven with the strands of the curious and the seemingly impossible. And listeners, if these weird facts have piqued your interest, our next segment should satisfy your historical curiosities. We'll journey through Los Angeles' past, uncovering the origins and development of this multifaceted metropolis. So stay with us as we rewind time and discover the roots of the City of Angels. You've been traveling through weird and wonderful LA with Lara and Luca. Don't touch that dial. Welcome back to Travel with Lara and Luca, where our LA journey now takes a detour down the storied avenues of history. From a small pueblo to a sprawling metropolis, Los Angeles has a story at every street corner and a history etched in its skyline. So lace up your metaphorical walking shoes, dear listeners, because we're about to trace the steps of those who laid the foundations of this city of dreams. Let's set the scene. It's the 18th century and the area we now call Los Angeles is home to the native Tongva people. Then in 1769, Spanish explorers lay their eyes upon this land of abundance. And in the warming glow of a September day in 1781, a group of 44 settlers known as Los Pobladores made their way from present-day Mexico, founding El Pueblo de Nuestra Señora La Reina de Los Angeles. Quite the mouthful. The town of Our Lady, the Queen of Angels, but Lara, why don't you tell our listeners about the great renaming, how LA was a bit of a tongue twister? Oh, sure. The original name, though grand, proved to be quite cumbersome, so it was eventually shortened to Los Angeles, condensing the regality into a breezy two-word moniker. Fast forward to the 20th century, and the city began to sprawl thanks to the water-guzzling ambitions of one William Mulholland. Remember him from the weird facts? How could we not? Our city owes much of its sprawl to that man's waterworks, the Los Angeles Aqueduct, a feat of engineering that also stirred controversy, pitting LA against the rural Owens Valley. Water under the bridge now, but that aqueduct was a lifeline, channeling life to the growing city. LA was then ripe for a major metamorphosis, the entertainment industry. Not just ripe, Lara, it was a revolution. The city drew filmmakers for its reliable sunshine and varied landscapes. And so, by the 1920s, Hollywood became synonymous with silver screen wizardry, cranking out dreams by the real. Cinematic dreams in a land of promise. Yet the 30s brought a darker chapter, the Great Depression. But LA, ever the phoenix, rose through New Deal programs that brought us treasures like Union Station and Griffith Observatory. Then came World War II, a time when LA shifted gears from cinema to aviation. Aircraft manufacturing boomed and women, like the iconic Rosie the Riveter, stepped into roles that redefined their place in the workforce. Post-war, the city blossomed beyond the movie lots. The mid-20th century saw an explosion of art, architecture, music, a cultural renaissance that painted the city in vibrant new tones. Mid-century modern homes began dotting the hillsides, glass and steel wonders that melded with nature. Think of the Stahl House, perched like a camera lens ready to capture the city's panoramic views. That house is the epitome of LA modernism, but development wasn't all sleek lines and sunset cocktails. LA's history is also marked by strife and struggle. True. Take the Los Angeles riots of 1992, sparked by the acquittal of four LAPD officers, highlighting issues of racial injustice and police brutality a pivotal moment for the city, urging reforms and reflection. It was a fiery call for change. LA's history is no static, glossy film reel. It's dynamic, fraught with trials, brimming with tales of resilience. And resilience would be the word for those who rode the undulating waves of the 90s tech boom and the 2000s tech bust, riding into the current digital renaissance, turning LA into Silicon Beach. Today's LA is an alloy, the strength of its history melded with the futurism of tech startups and the ever-turning wheel of Hollywood. Let's not forget the role sports have played, from the Dodgers' move from Brooklyn in 1958 to the Lakers establishing their kingdom, sports has uplifted the city time and again. Sports, movies, music, 
it all dances to the beat of LA's ceaseless heart. And speaking of music, Laurel Canyon was the cradle for 60s and 70s rock and folk music, a sonic revolution in the hills. Musicians like Jim Morrison, Joni Mitchell, and members of the Birds crafted a sound there that still echoes today. Los Angeles isn't just seen, it's heard and felt. Now, dear listeners, no history lesson can be complete without addressing the landmarks, an enduring narrative written in iron, wood, and stone. The Bradbury Building, with its radiant atrium, Watts Towers, those spires of commitment, Capitol Records Building, resembling a stack of records, each a chapter, a verse in the grand poem that is Los Angeles. Which whisper to us, don't they? Even as we commute in our cars, headphones and ears, the city tells us its story, if we just listen. And that story is still being written by every resident, every vision shared, every script penned. LA's history is its people, a mosaic as diverse as its terrain, united in aspiration. Those aspirations will continue to shape the LA of tomorrow, an endless tale spun on the loom of the Pacific horizon. Well said. And as the sun sets on our history trip, stay tuned for what's up next. We'll spill our most expert of travel tips to ensure your LA experience is like no other. Don't zoom away just yet. We'll be right back to scatter travel wisdom like confetti over your LA itinerary. You're journeying once more with travel with Lara and Luca, and having delved into the historical heart of Los Angeles, we're switching gears to our expert travel tips. Whether you're a first timer, a frequent visitor, or even a local looking to rediscover your city, we're here to ensure your LA escapades are nothing short of legendary. We've been your city of angels guides through time. Now let's navigate the present day streets, figuratively speaking, with practical finesse. First up, let's tackle the elephant on the freeway, LA traffic. Oh, Luca, LA traffic isn't just a traffic jam. It's practically a lifestyle. Our number one tip, plan around it. Morning rush generally runs from 7 to 10 a.m. and the evening slog drags from 4 to 7 p.m. Try to travel outside these hours where possible. Absolutely. Podcasts and patients will be your best friends during those times. But let's not discount public transportation. The metro and bus lines can be time savers, especially with the expansions to the system. The expo line to Santa Monica, blessing for beachgoers. A scenic ride with no parking drama, and on the subject of parking, let's reiterate a golden rule. Read the signs. Puzzling parking restrictions are as LA as avocado toast. You don't want an unexpected ticket souvenir. Trust us. Now for some cultural immersion. LA is vast and varied, so mix up your itinerary. Downtown one day, beachside the next, maybe a mountain hike or a museum crawl. There's more to this city than just Hollywood Boulevard. Diverse experiences for a diverse city. And speaking of beachside, Remember that the coast's microclimate can be cooler, so a light jacket should always be within reach, even if the inland forecast is toasty. Layers are your friend in LA. Now let's chat lodging west side downtown Hollywood, where to stay. Each area offers a unique side of LA. West side for beach access, Hollywood for the hustle, downtown for the urban explorer. And remember, LA is more spread out than a starfish on Santa Monica Beach. Choosing a centralized base can save you lots of commute time. If you're looking to splurge on a meal, consider lunch instead of dinner. Many high-end restaurants have lunch menus that are more wallet-friendly and offer the same high-quality experience. Or seek out happy hours. LA has a love affair with early evening discounts. Sip on cocktails or bite into gourmet appetizers without the premium price tag. Price tags lead me to shopping. LA's retail therapy ranges from luxury labels to thrift store trophies. Hit up the Grove for an all-in-one experience, Melrose Avenue for quirky finds, or Rodeo Drive to window shop among the world's finest brands. And remember, sales tax varies by city within LA County, so prices might be slightly different depending on where you're shopping. Now an unexpected tip, but a worthy one, stay hydrated. LA's climate, while beautiful, can be dry. Keep water on hand, and your skin, lips, and body will thank you as you roam. And while we love the sun here, sun protection is key. Sunscreen, hats, and sunglasses should be part of your daily gear. No one does a sunburn with the same glamour as a film star does a red carpet. Protecting your skin is a long-term investment in looking as good as the LA locals. Speaking of locals, mingle and chat with them. 
Angelinos are a treasure trove of recommendations and insider knowledge, where to find the best street tacos, that hidden speakeasy, a serene hiking trail. The locals know best. And for those out-of-the-box experiences, consider an LA tour with a twist. Try a walking architecture tour, a foodie exploration, or even a ghostly adventure in haunted LA. Ah, those will give your travels a storyline like no other. And here's something people forget. Despite its urban sprawl, LA loves nature. Visit the many gardens, parks, and green spaces like Griffith Park or the LA River Pathways for two-wheeled adventures. And a big one, events. LA's calendar is jam-packed, from the LA Film Festival to food fests, cultural parades, and free concerts. Check the local listings. There's always something happening. Including park film screenings or the downtown art walk. LA thrives on spontaneity, and sometimes the best plans are the ones you don't make. But for the plans you do make, reservations are always a good idea. Be it for your hotel, a rented convertible, or that trendy sushi spot, book ahead. LA's hotspots fill up fast. Absolutely. And let's not forget about the magic of museum-free days. Keep an eye out as many museums offer days where you can enjoy the exhibits without spending a dime. That wraps up our expert travel tips to master the art of LA living. But don't leave us yet. Next up, we'll rev up for some amazing side excursions that'll add that extra zing to your LA visit. So stay parked right there. We've got more travel treasures ahead. Welcome back, fellow LA aficionados. You're tuned into Travel with Lara and Luca. And while Los Angeles itself is a treasure trove of experiences, let's not forget the gems lying just beyond the city limits, the side excursions that promise a different flavor of Southern California culture. Yes, Luca, because as much as LA is a microcosm of the world, sometimes a brief jaunt outside its embrace reveals natural wonders, historical sites, and beachside getaways just a stone's throw away. And what better way to start than with a voyage to the Fair Isle of Catalina? Just about an hour-long ferry ride from Long Beach or San Pedro, and voila, you're transported to an island retreat that seems a world apart. Catalina is the very essence of tranquility. Its charming town of Avalon, the rugged interior, the glass-bottom boat tours, it's the side excursion that'll have you feeling like you've taken a full-fledged holiday. Prepare for bison sightings, yes, actual bison. They were brought over for a film in the 20s and have since become island natives. Catalina's magic doesn't just lie in its history, but in its spirit of adventure. Snorkeling in the kelp forests, zip lining over canyons, or soaking up starry nights, it brings the Southern California dream to life. For a shift from leisure to literature, an excursion to the Huntington Library, Art Museum, and Botanical Gardens in San Marino is a day trip into elegance and enlightenment. The library holds rare books and manuscripts. Think original Chaucer and Shakespeare. The art collections stun, but it's the gardens, a tapestry of more than a dozen themed botanical spaces that might just steal the show. After literary and botanical bliss, what about a bit of vino to round out the experience? Southern California's wine country is phenomenal, and the vineyards of Temecula are just a couple of hours' drive from L.A. The rolling hills of Temecula are dotted with family-owned vineyards and large-scale wineries. Enjoy tastings, tours, and the kind of pastoral scenes that will have you believing in the Napa of the South. There's something about sipping a glass of wine amid the vines that produced it, isn't there, Lara? It's the taste of the terrain, the sun in a bottle, and the flavor of dedication. Speaking of natural splendor, how about exchanging the golden beaches for the sandy expanses of Joshua Tree National Park? Ah, Joshua Tree, the mystical desert wonderland where Dr. Seuss-like trees and rock formations create otherworldly landscapes. Whether for camping, stargazing, or rock climbing, Joshua Tree feels like it's on the fringe of reality, where silence speaks and stars narrate. It's a side trip that reconnects you to the earth under the guard of those iconic twisty trees. And let's not forget the peculiar Integratron nearby, where sound baths promise an acoustic healing experience. Absolutely, Lara. But if you're after coastal charm, consider the sleepy seaside enclave of Ojai, a retreat for artists and those escaping the city's buzz. It's nestled in a valley in the Topatopa Mountains, filled with galleries, boutiques, and stunning views. And let's talk about the pink moment. 
the sunset that paints the mountains in a rosy glow. It's a sunset ceremony, a daily spectacle that marks the slow passage of time in tune with the Earth's heartbeat. From Ojai, let's sail our metaphorical ship back to the LA County borders and dock at the harborside jewel of San Pedro with its maritime thrills and bustling fish markets. There's a palpable sense of history in San Pedro, a community deeply tied to the ocean. The USS Iowa Battleship Museum gives a taste of naval life, and the nearby Point Furman Lighthouse tells tales of ships guided safely ashore. And for those museum enthusiasts craving a touch of contemporary, the Broad Satellite Museum, the Marciano Art Foundation, is in an old Masonic temple on Wilshire. It's a blend of avant-garde art in a traditional setting. Innovative artistry within walls steeped in mystery, LA's nearby excursions seem to have a running theme of delightful contradictions. Let's not forget one of the most profound of nearby jaunts, El Pueblo de Los Angeles Historical Monument. The birthplace of LA, this close-to-home excursion is like a small journey back in time to understand the city's origins. Stroll down Olvera Street, an area ripe with history, reverberating with the echoes of the past through its marketplace, museums, and the Avila Adobe, LA's oldest standing residence. It's like a Mexican marketplace brought forth through time, a vibrant historical thread seamlessly woven into the city's cultural fabric. For those looking for something truly unique, how about the Nethercut Collection? Just 30 minutes north of LA, it's a car enthusiast's dream, boasting a showroom of impeccably maintained vintage cars and mechanical musical instruments. The beauty is stunning, each car a shining emblem of its era, lovingly cared for, preserved, and presented. It's a hidden museum gem that's well worth the side trip. And where the metallic echoes of history dwell, there too do the more organic whispers of the past in the form of old growth at the ancient forest in Santa Clarita, home to some of the oldest living trees in the world. So as we wind down our side excursions, we hope you've jotted down some of these day trips. Whether your LA excursion weaves through the narrative of history, the spirituality of nature, or the wonders of viniculture, there's a side trip custom made to suit your wanderlust. That's right, but our journey doesn't end here. When we return, it's time for our conclusion and final thoughts. Your travel companions, Lara and Luca, will be right back, reflecting on our city. Beautiful, complex, and ever dreaming. As our radiant LA day comes to a close and the California twilight paints the sky in shades of gold and blush, we find ourselves nearing the end of this episode of Travel with Lara and Luca. We've wandered together through the streets of Hollywood, around the bends of hidden gardens, through the annals of history, and even across the sea to Catalina. We've laughed, reminisced, and perhaps even learned a thing or two. How time flies when you're living and reliving the stories of this city. This episode has been a journey not just in miles, but in the very heartbeat of Los Angeles. A city that is an enigma, a mystery wrapped in sunshine, and a tale that never quite ends. In trying to capture its essence, we've only brushed the surface. Because LA isn't a static painting, it's a living, breathing canvas that's repainted every day by those who love it, challenge it, and call it home. It's a city of stars and stories. Stars not just in the heavens or on the sidewalks of Hollywood Boulevard, but in the eyes of every dreamer who sets their sights on this corner of the earth. And what about our stories? Each site we've visited today has been a page in our collective book, each site echoing with the footsteps of the past and the whispers of the future. From every corner, there's a different rhythm, a different melody. Los Angeles is a symphony composed by diversity played out on an instrument of coasts, hills, and boulevards. And as the symphony rises and falls, new movements are always beginning. New genres of food, burlesque revival theaters, open-air book festivals, and boundary-pushing art installations. For the curious, the city offers a labyrinth of wonders. To those seeking respite, it gives sunset-laced beaches and tranquil gardens. To the dreamer, it promises a canvas of endless possibility. And while we have shared LA's landmarks, its flavors, and its secrets, remember that there is always more to explore. To truly know Los Angeles is to continue to seek, to listen, to watch, and to always be willing to take that left turn down an unexplored street. 
four left turns can lead to enchanted English gardens tucked away between high rises or mural covered alleys that tell the tales of a hundred lives. And though we may take our leave for now, our footprints remain here alongside yours in the sands of Santa Monica, on the steps of the Getty, and in the hearts of everyone who has ever loved this city. As we prepare to sign off, we invite you to embrace LA with the same affection we have. A fondness not just for its icons, but for its idiosyncrasies. Embrace it not just as a tourist, but as a participant in its ongoing story. Whether you're savoring a taco on a sunny street corner, catching a flick under the stars, or breathing in the ocean breeze on the Pacific Coast Highway, remember that LA is more than a destination. It's an experience. And with that, we thank you for traveling with us, Lara and Luca, your guides, your fellow explorers, and if we dare say so, your friends on this journey through the City of Angels. Until next time, when we open the map to embark on a new adventure, keep your compasses handy and your curiosity ablaze. This is Luca. And Lara, wishing you golden sunsets and starlit dreams. Cheers to Los Angeles, our city, your city, the world's city. Stay wandering, stay wonderful. Folks, if you've enjoyed today's voyage as much as we have, don't be a stranger. Reach out with your LA stories, share your own hidden gems, and let us know what resonated with you. Drop us a line, a comment, or even a postcard from your own travels. And tune in next time for more tales, tips, and the inimitable charm of destinations unknown. We're already plotting the course of our next episode, and we can't wait to share it with you. So until then, be well, explore often, and always keep the spirit of travel alive in your heart. Thank you for joining us, and farewell from Travel with Lara and Luca. <laughs>